Help you folks? Name's Randolph. I'm the manager. We're looking for Rose. Works as a waitress down at the diner? Rose, sure. Nice girl. Who wants to know? I'm Alan Wake. The writer, huh? I heard on the radio you were visiting. Well, I'll show you her trailer. That Rose, she's a nice girl. Always pays her rent on time. As I was saying, Al, I found all sorts of weird stuff from the local newspaper's archives. This place is crazy! Disappearances, mysterious deaths, urban legends come true, and, get this, most of this stuff takes place around Cauldron Lake. Well, you ain't wrong, mister. The Indians thought the lake was a doorway to the underworld. I'm the God-fearing type myself. I, I don't hold with that sort of thing. Yeah, okay. Anyway, there was an island there owned by a guy called Thomas Zane. Now, some of the articles I found about him make him out to be a famous <laughs> writer. But I ran a bunch of searches, couldn't find a single thing he wrote. Zane was heavily into diving, so much so that the place came to be called Diver's Isle. But the volcano under the lake erupted in 1970, and Zane went down with the island. This guy doesn't mind. I like how they, they adapt the AI to go around you. Alright. Welcome to horror. Yeah, how about that? It was there in the morning, as if it had fallen from the sky. But it would take a tornado to lift something like that. We're damn lucky it didn't crush any of the trailers. Dorothy's in town, boys. One guy sounds like Titus from uh, FFX. Randy's hot dogs. Randy's dogs. Oh, really? You can't read the sign? Rabbit food? Salad with chicken. Come on, mister. I'll take you to Rose's trailer. Sparkling River Special. Asgardian chicken parmesan. What? Right. Just follow me. It's not far. Excuse me, sir. I'm uh, reading the menu. So yeah, you guys might notice the mic is a little different today. I've uh, adjusted the old shitty mic, so um, we're gonna try Listen, it out. Listen, I got things to do. This place don't run itself. All right, fine. Go. So I uh, hope you guys don't mind. Tested it earlier extensively. Should be running much better now. After you, sir. It gets better. A local girl, Barbara Jagger, drowned in Cauldron Lake just a week earlier. They were lovers. Sure, Jagger's a local spook store. The scratching hag comes for you in the dark. Childish stuff like that. The hag. Anyway, Al, I'm just getting to the best part. All of the articles about this stuff were written by Cynthia Weaver. I asked around, and she's that crazy bag lady you met. What, the lamp lady? She can be a little loopy, but she's not homeless or anything. Yeah, anyway... What the fuck are we doing in here? She both Jagger and Zane before they both died, and she had some kind of a breakdown. Why did this guy come over here to shoo the, the crows away from his trash? What happened to the AT-2020? I, I still have it, it's just, uh, having trouble setting it up. Basically, it's a pain in the ass to set it up, so, uh, it's much easier just to use the, the shitty headset. Well, mister, this here's Rose's trailer. You mind me asking what you want with her? We're just here to talk to her, pal. The haunted tire swing. Oh my god, we're Superman. <laughs> You may see the return of the AT-2020 uh, tomorrow night, depending on how uh, I judge the audio tonight, if I deem it necessary. Oh my god, she's like right there. Welcome to... to... Oh dear. Mr. Wake, I'm... I'm so glad you're here. Rose, you have my manuscript? Oh. Oh yes. Yes. Please, come in. Something's not right. Coffee isn't coffee. Hey, this is really good. Rose. Yes. My manuscript. I really need it. I understand. I know what you need. 
Amused to inspire you. Oh, for Barry? She doesn't have anything. Yeah, uh, hey Al? Al, what's... Oh. Barry, no! What? What? coming for you, hiding in my barber's skin. I'm too weak to stop it. You must turn the lights on. I promised I'd come visit you and your lovely wife. You must finish what you started. I insist. You must turn the lights on. I felt nauseous, hung over. Only anger kept me going. Anger and I coffee. I can't tell reality from dream anymore, but it seems I have an imaginary editor to help me. She's an old woman in a funeral dress. I call her Barbara Jagger. She's very strict. I I'm writing faster and faster. My manuscript is being heavily revised. The edits are getting very aggressive, and each day there's less of me and more of her. I hate it, but I know she's right. She promises me I can save Alice this way. She knows more of this than I do, about the complex incantation I'm attempting, about this place. She's worked with another writer under similar circumstances, Thomas Zane. The genre of the story seems to be shifting. It's turning into a horror story. I'm getting close. I can feel it. I told you it was horror. True horror. The kind that obsesses and stalks you. Those are not the same man. <laughs> it almost looks like, um... Uh, who's that guy that does Iron Man? Fuck, I'm like drawing a blank on his name now. <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> I don't know why I was thinking of somebody else for a second. Almost looks like that's him on the right. Tony Stark, yeah, Tony Stark. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, uh, uh, <laughs> I was gonna say somebody else, never mind. <laughs> that looks like they're on the right, like a really young one. You mean bad actor? Not a bad actor, what are you talking about? Just does too much cocaine, that's all. Alright, gonna try and escape. Rose took a day for me. I had less than 12 hours left to meet the kidnapper. All I could do was get Barry into the car, work something out once I got on the road. Welcome to the Oh Dear Diner. Oh shit. What can I get you today? How about some coffee? Coffee. I couldn't work up much hate for Rose. Something had used her to get to me and left its mark. First refill is free. Milk and sugar on the counter there. Would you like to hear today's specials? Thank you. Okay. Have a nice day. Thank you. I'll Come be back on. later. Hmm. Alright, I'll be back. My gun and flashlight were gone. I'd have to find a way to get Barry into the car as quickly as possible. There was no time to waste. Better check this manuscript and waste some time. Mr. Randolph liked Rose. That little smile she had. How she was still sweet when life had tried so hard to make her bitter. It wasn't any of his business what she did in her trailer. But those strangers, the writer and his smart-ass sidekick, looked like trouble. And they'd been in there for hours, way past her normal bedtime. He reached for the phone and called the sheriff's station. Oh shit. That means the sheriff's on our ass already. Chris Pratt and Chris uh, Hampsworth. We have to find a way to get him into this car. He's hung over. Shit, I'm hung over. Where are we going? They want me to drive the car over. We gotta listen to this radio. I just stepped outside to catch a breath of fresh air. Let me tell you, the weather's getting heavy. 
Nights like this make me especially glad I'm here talking to you and not home in bed. Once, once the weather takes a turn like this, I can't sleep at all. It's all tangled bed sheets and dark thoughts, punctuated by the occasional plunge into nightmare. <laughs> is it just me? Well, perhaps it is. <laughs> but I hope I can make the night a little bit easier to get through. Caller, you're on KBF FM. Hey, Pat, it's Walt Snyder. What's on your mind, Walt? Well, I ain't the way you are, but, well, uh, I can't sleep either, you know? Uh, I've just been staring out the window here, trying to make sense of it all, but, uh, I ain't been drinking either, you know? I just... Well, you sound like a man with a problem, Walt. Something like that, Walt. Yeah. Well, you know, he's, uh, you know, Daddy's my best friend, and, uh, they let me, um, fail today. And now I'm just alone here at the window, you know, waiting. Man. Holy shit, this guy's losing man, his shit. In the ear tonight, man. Uh, I was just outside looking up at the sky above our broadcast tower, thinking the same thing. What are you waiting for, Walt? I don't know. I, you know, something's gonna happen. You know, I gotta, I gotta, I, I think I better go. Well, well uh, maybe... No, that, thanks, Pat. Uh, well, good luck to you, Walt. Hang in there. Uh, let's take a little break, folks. This weather's really something else, huh? What the hell is this radio station? Oh, boy. For some reason, I was wanting them to play Jump Around. Oh, that would have been great. Jump Around! Holy shit, that guy's just standing out there. We gotta find a gun. He's gonna turn on us. Shit, what was that? Alright, that was nothing. That's not nothing. Somebody out there taking a piss? Listen to rave, rave music. Wait, what character did he play in uh, Jurassic World? Dinosaurs never ate humans. They weren't around. <laughs> Impossible for them to eat humans. Oh, you're going. Oh, he's the raptor trainer. Oh, I know that. Guy. <laughs> Shit, we're under God arrest. knows what you've done to that poor girl. This is Agent Nightingale, FBI. Get him up, Hemingway. You're under arrest. Oh, uh, Alan Wake, not Hemingway. Move a muscle all unload right in your goddamn face. Stay right where you are, Slay. Holy shit, they're trying to kill me. Dodge him. Standing right here, you goddamn maniac! I hated to leave Barry behind, but there was no way I'd miss my appointment with the kidnapper. Give it up, Mr. Wake! Come on! Oh shit, they're coming. Where does we run towards the police? Wanted. Shit. Where the hell 
helicopter. How the fuck are they gonna see me in this fog? There he is! Oh! Three. They're shooting the kill! <laughs> God gave me a flashlight and a gun, and I was like, thanks, jackass. And he was like, it's got a futuristic laser rifle. <laughs> gave me a fucking revolver and a double-A battery flashlight. Shit. The dark presence. For decades, the darkness that wore Barbara Jagger's skin slept fitfully in the dark place that was its home and prison. It was hungry and in pain. It dreamed of its nights of glory when the poet's writing had called it from the depths and given it a brief, terrible taste of power and freedom. The rock stars had stirred it from the deep sleep the poet had sunk it back to in the end. When it sensed the rider on the ferry, it opened its eyes. I know, right? You think like, oh shit, you think like I could have written myself some like Iron Man armor or something? Spider-Man powers. I just write myself a shitty gun. Shit. Check the trunk for a gun. There's always a gun in the trunk. Rose didn't know how the strange old lady got in her trailer, and she looked wrong somehow. The woman showed her teeth in an approximation of a smile and traced a finger down Rose's cheek. Pretty girl, she said. Rose felt as if she was falling asleep, but her knees didn't buckle. The crone spoke in a whisper, her words ice cold and dark in Rose's ear. My pretty. And Alan Wake flew back home to planet Krypton and save his people from the horror. The suspect was last sighted running along the cores that leads westward from the trailer park. All units are advised that the suspect may be armed. Approach with caution. Maybe armed? What the fuck? The pen is mightier than the sword! <laughs> Alan Wake in a shitty dress. What the fuck are they sending up a flare for? Search the area. They trying to become Super Saiyans or something? Run Molotovs at me now? This way. Over here. Oh, he's dead. This horror was everywhere I went, circling me. The cops didn't stand a chance. They were after a rider, not a monster. Or were they? Sheriff Baker, this is Agent Nightingale. I've lost contact with the person Linda was assigned to me. It's Wake's doing. Wait, are you seriously telling me that Geek Rider just took out my deputies? Are you kidding? I mean, have you seen this guy? He wears a tweed jacket. Over. Excuse me? He's the guy we're chasing. If it's not him, who then? Bigfoot? Over. I don't know yet, but I'm not in the habit of jumping to conclusions. That tends to come back and bite you in the ass. 
save them? <laughs> I know. I can eat under this jacket. You better watch out. Took out the boys, boss. What are we doing next? Where the fuck are we going? Pretty sure we've escaped the police several times over. Or look using this telescope. They're dead. Gotta get that teardrop so we can stop the moon from falling in 72 hours. Shit, the moon's gone. Better take my coffee and listen to my favorite radio station. Uh, this is Jane. Mulligan, Thornton, come in. Over. Uh, uh, Thornton here. Uh, Jane. We got both Wheeler and Rose in custody. <laughs> they didn't put up a fight or anything. Why they were hey, what are you doing? Come on! Sit down and give me that. Jane, Mulligan here. Over. Uh, go ahead, Mulligan, over! Uh, we got Wheeler and Rose here. Wheeler's drunk or hopped up on something. Speaking of which, that fed had a pretty distinctive whiff of all the scotch about him, you know what I mean. Over. Uh I don't have anything on that, Deputy Mulligan. Over. Well, whatever. Anyway, Rose is just being plain weird here. You better get Doc in and take a look at both of them. Over. Gotcha. You better get them here quickly. The, uh, Fed's gonna wanna interview Wheeler, over. <laughs> oh, yeah, I bet he does. Looks like they have a lot in common. Mulligan out. What the hell is that supposed to mean? Who are these assholes? I could see the lights at the radio station in the distance. Oh, nice. Really not a hell of a lot going on up there. Oh, there's the moon. Gonna get our secret achievement. Give me that moon drop! Not gonna give me anything, is it? All right, where the shit am I supposed to go next? I imagine that the broadcast tower in the distance was part of the local radio station. Maine seemed like a decent guy. Perhaps he could give me directions to the coal mine. Unnatural shadows clung to the gate. The darkness that was after me was trying to stop me. I wouldn't get through without a light. Or without a coffee. Ah, uh, excuse me, game? Thank you. Better get this shitty generator online. That's not a fire hazard or anything. The old generator conked out, 
I'd have to see if I could fix it and try again. Kick. Okay. Pretty sure that's not how generators are fixed. I ought to know. on that barrel that thing clipping into it all right cheese you better be getting me a witcher sword from that uh, website just the flashbang grenades they were an ideal weapon for my situation Transfer the money over. Shit, he's coming. Run for your goddamn life. Oh, God. Come on, Alan. Oh, God. <laughs> the Huntress. Run for your goddamn life. Slow as shit. Oh, Max can't get me here. And here's another call. You're on KBFFM with Pat Main. It's Milk Peabody, Pat. What's on your mind, Milk? Well, I live near the trailer park, Pat, and there's a big ruckus going on over there. Well, that's just up the road from me, too. Uh, what's going on, do you know? I don't know, but there's a bunch of police cars there, lots of sirens, a helicopter buzzing around, and I think I heard some gunshots. Gunshots? Yes, sir, like from a pistol. So can you find out what's going on? Because it's just next door and they're popping off guns there. They're still shooting? No, it was maybe 10, 15 minutes ago. It sounds serious, Pat. I'm telling you, it don't sound like no party. Well, I'm certainly going to give the station a call, Milt. Okay. You'll hear it here as soon as I hear from them. Okay, thanks. Oh, man. They left their shirt out here. What the hell? Bigfoot's drying his laundry. Oh, shit, there's the radio tower. He's not used to starch either, son of a bitch. Wild animal. Shit! Oh god, we're surrounded! Touched by the dark presence, Rose was lost in a dreamland where everything was drawn in black and gray crayons. The old lady had promised her that all her wishes would come true. She would be Alan Wake's muse. She was smiling so hard it hurt her face. She crushed a bottle full of sleeping pills into the coffee. Deep down inside, 
She was screaming in terror. Coming. We need a goddamn gun. Doka 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 doka. Holy shit! Where's my pallet? <laughs> Not the right way to go. Come on, Alan. Oh, oh my God, this guy's aim. Back on the path, boys. Oh my god. You just hear the footsteps. It's coming. Oh, okay, we can just use the door, I guess. I hope yeah, Maine could lend me a car to get to the coal here. mine. Good cup of coffee. Of course you're going to have trouble in a place like that. I mean, what do you expect? The sheriff should be helping us normal citizens instead of wasting resources on those people. Well... Let the trash sort themselves out. I'm sorry, but my granddaddy settled in Bright Falls in 1911. Well, thank you very much for that uh, compassionate viewpoint, Lorna. Oh, here's a little surprise. The famous writer Alan Wake just walked in, folks. I'm going to see if I can talk him into an interview. Come on in, Mr. Wake. Oh, I'm so glad you could find the time to do this, Mr. Wake. Way to go, jackass. Nowhere to run now, Jim Brown. You back away from me. Don't hurt. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Everyone calm down. Put the gun down. We're all friends here, right? Cool your jets, Nightingale. We got them. What the hell's the matter with you? There's a civilian in there. I'll get you yet, even if it kills me. You hear me? You hear me, HP Lovecraft? I had fallen off so many cliffs, it was ridiculous. That's what you get for naming a book the sudden stop. It was probably good I hadn't had the chance to tell Maine where I was going. I'd have to lose the cops and find my own way to the mine. They reference HP Lovecraft and then they have a water tower over here. You guys get the reference? <laughs> Someone yelled Judas Priest. <laughs> Nightingale stared through the broken studio window into the dark woods. 
He turned around, started to walk out, but Maine grabbed his arm. Young man, you almost shot me. You don't shoot off rounds at people like that. What's the matter with you? Nightingale shook his arm free, marched out. His cheeks burned with rage and humiliation. What the fuck? He's a loose cannon cop! Oh, we're not supposed to have those yet. <laughs> oh! We still have some flashbangs, boys. Darkness is coming. Oh, you're not allowed to be there! What are you doing, you... All these skill checks. Gun! That way, I'm going this way. Can't stop me! Lovecraft's on the loose! FBI! You can't stop me, coppers! I have the high ground! What a shot! going by the way I think I'm going I'm definitely going the wrong way there's got to be something up here right there's got to be something worth coming up here for we only got six rounds left You know what? I'm not committing. No, there's, this is clearly not the right way to go. You know, or maybe it is. You know what? Fuck it. We're committing. <laughs> we're committed. <laughs> the moon's telling me. This is the way. I knew it. Danny had stepped out, but what stumbled back in was something else. Something alien. A monster. Walter tried to kill it, first with his fists, then a chair. It wouldn't die. Instead, it kept coming, unaffected by the beating it had taken. After Walter managed to kick it down the cellar stairs, fear took over. He ran, got behind the wheel, Gun the engine. The booze wouldn't make him forget, but he knew he had to try. He had to try to forget, or he had to try and gun. All that was up here? Couple flares in the manuscript? Fuck you, game. Where's my rifle? Shotgun. Alright, I see how it is. 
They're waiting. They're trying to shit on me now. There was no sensible reason for the power company work lights to be here. It was almost as if they'd been left for someone like me to use. Goddamn shotgun. I want to go over here. But there's something over here. The bulldozer's engine roared to life. Mud and rocks flew as it fought for traction. It crashed the concrete wall and landed heavily in the yard. If it were an animal, it would have shaken its head after the impact, fixed its eyes on me, and charged. Of course, it had no head, nor eyes. Shadows crawled on its form, twisting it into a monster. Then, it came for me. It's coming for me. Coffee. 
For my manuscript! Sarah trusted her gut, and her gut said Agent Nightingale was an asshole. He felt wrong, and it wasn't just the smell of stale booze. It was in the way he flashed his badge, pulled rank, the look in his eyes when he wanted answers. Where was Alan Wake? What was this about an accident? Where was his wife? And most importantly, why did she let Wake go? He wouldn't answer her questions. Federal business was all he'd say. Oh. Gotta get a ride on that train! Hello? The most stubborn man I've ever met. Alice? Alice? Alan. Alan. I'm so afraid. It keeps me in the dark. Please help me. I look at you, Alan, and it's not you. It's something else. Looking out from behind your eyes. Alice, I'm here. I'm so alone here. It's all gonna go to hell. You need to be careful. Cooperate. The connection had been terrible, but that wasn't the only thing that hadn't been right with the call. She sounded wrong somehow, but she had called me. wrenched itself loose from the bridge's steel framework. Wrapped in darkness, it floated in midair, twitching. For a moment, I didn't understand what I was looking at. The heavy object lurched at me with impossible force. I threw myself out of the way, but just barely. When I turned my flashlight on it, it shook in a dark rage before it flew at me again. Is it possible to throw yourself? It's possible to throw as yourself possible to throw yourself. I don't think it is. I think that's bullshit. Breathing. Shotgun shell rounds. Holy shit! He's behind me. He's not behind me. I could see a railway bridge up ahead, and a warehouse of some sort on the opposite shore. I hoped I could find a car from there. Everything in its path.
dumb son of a bitch. Shit. See that coffee in there? I slammed the door shut right in his smug face. He pleaded for me to open the door. True to form, the asshole actually thought I would obey. I had no sympathy left. No guilt either. Not for him. I took a moment to savor the scream. I bet I had a smile on my face. It was all that I had time for. The dark presence was inside the lodge with me. As a teenager, just started to get interested in writing. Stephen King had been a source of inspiration to me. I thought about all the inanimate objects that had come to life in his books. No one is safe in a good horror story. Certainly not the protagonist. That's what makes them fun. This was anything but. The darkness could possess anything, and it was getting closer. Right? Holy shit, that's actually a lot of them. Shot. favorite TV show. We take the facts of our existence for granted, unaware that they are merely a thin veneer of desperate self-delusion, covering a vast cosmos of madness and horror. All too often, the stars are right in Night Springs. Tonight's episode, A Family Occasion. Journalist Alvin Durlis' trip to study the local customs of an insular community in Night Springs has been less than successful. Until tonight. Well, I'm glad you changed your minds about this. Ancient customs, local mythology. My editor loves this kind of stuff. Well, Mr. Durlis, we don't want to feel like we're on exhibition. But you have demonstrated the seriousness of your intent. Oh, I am serious. Really, just do your thing. I'll stay out of your way and observe. Actually, I thought you could assist us. I'm afraid we are a man short. It would provide you with an intimate perspective. Could I really? Of course, Mr. Durlis. Well, I guess that's the least I... What would I have to do? Oh, here. Let me show you with a kiss. I, uh, I... <laughs> 
The darkness surged towards me, sucking everything loose from the ground into its depths, tugging at my clothes. I saw the flare the kidnapper had dropped and threw myself towards it just as I felt my feet leave the ground. The darkness embraced me with the force of a tornado. Somehow I managed to light the flare. The darkness roared and cast me away. I fell toward the dark waters of the lake far below. Absolute bullshit. <laughs> Give me all that stuff. I could have used GG. Oh, look, more energizers. Is that actually brand name energizer? It actually is. <laughs> oh, you know what? Let's go check and see where the bulldozer came out from. Oh, there's another box over here, too. Any coffee up there? Get more uh, flashbangs. And we are loaded. Fifteen flares. Have you guys ever used a roadside flare before? They're not very good. Like I considered keeping a uh, keeping a flashlight and those like reflective triangles, and then I considered having flares. So I tried some of the flares, and I was like, they're fucking worthless. Like you can't see shit with them. <laughs> they're more distracting than anything else. And they last like 
five minutes. I had never been this glad to see the sunrise. I had a couple of hours to get to the coal mine. The coal mine wasn't far now. Please just stop looking for me. Today, I would meet the kidnapper, and he would give me Alice. I wouldn't give him any other choice. A drowning man will clutch at a straw. What? Why would you need a straw? Clutching for it. Over this trash can? But I'm not gun! Aren't supposed to use them to see? What the hell are you supposed to use them for? To uh, light the gasoline pools on fire around your car when you crash? That's all they're good for. Yeah, you let the people know there's emergency, but they only last like five fucking minutes. Like, what the hell are you gonna get done in five minutes? Nothing. You're just making a smoke screen with them. <laughs> it like, it just creates like a red, red orangish light and then it adds smoke everywhere. It's like a perfect emergency situation. Low visibility and impaired vision. <laughs> or to locate you. Yeah, that's true. You can use them to locate you, but five fucking minutes? No. Get a goddamn flashlight. Lasts like 20 hours. They shouldn't give off smoke. Have you ever fucking lit a flare? They give off a lot of smoke, jeez. Such as many things that burn. Except for hydrogen. Alright. We're going to call the uh, horror stream here for tonight. Sorry it was short, but uh, there are things to attend to early tomorrow morning, such as work. Uh, but I will uh, be back tomorrow evening, uh, hopefully for more. Definitely uh, more Alan Wake, or uh, if not, then something else. So, uh, yeah. You've set off road players before? I don't know, maybe mine were just shitty. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, let's... um. Let's see our statistics. Let's see how, how far in we're at. God damn it. I've only got 30, 40 pages out of 106. We're going to have to, like, get on that. Can pyramids knock o knocked over? What the fuck? There's a statistic for can pyramids knocked over? Alarm clocks found. We haven't found any alarm clocks. Or cardboard people. Oh yeah, thanks for watching, Creed. Kills with the revolver. Or revolver ocelot. Coffee thermos is found. There's so many! Yeah, thanks for watching, Double. Uh, let's see if somebody else is streaming, though. I'm pretty sure somebody else.